next in. Welcome to next in February 25th. So we're we're getting down. We're almost two months fully down in the year 2022, which is uh, wild. I can't believe how fast it is going. Uh, welcome, Shane. So Shane Shane Shawn, my uh, co-host. I'm Taylor Duncan, and we have really special guest for us because we have met in person, Brian Brian Moyer, who is the President and CEO of the Greater Nashville Tech Council here in uh, Nashville, sorry, the Middle Tennessee, I guess, in general, and has been a huge part of growing the technology space here in Middle Tennessee. And in a weird way, we hadn't met him prior to next level moving to Nashville. However, I think part of his initiatives and everything probably helped spark Shane and I for different reasons to head down here and, and plant our flag uh, with our company next level. So we're really excited to have Brian. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be here. And, and I will, I will take pride if, uh, you know, our efforts had anything to do with you all uh, ending up here. I think that's great. I would I'm argue sure that, it that allowed us to come here because of you. Yes. yes Along with everybody involved. Yeah. So, all right, so we're going to start off, we start off with the really hard hitting questions to make this really challenging for you to get going. So we wanted to start off, we need a fun fact that many people don't know about Brian. Obviously, a lot of people, you have tons of connections in the uh, middle Tennessee space. What's a really fun fact about you outside of the fact that it looks like you have katanas in your background, so you might be the most dangerous person <laughs> you've interviewed. Those are my closers. Um, so. <laughs> Fun fact, um, I, I I feel like I was born into the wrong generation. You know, we had our award ceremony last week and it was a Roaring Twenties theme. That's the generation I should, because I grew up playing the trumpet in, in a jazz band and my entire high school and college, that, that eight year span, I played every single weekend, but it was jazz, you know? My friends were listening to rock and roll and I'm and I'm listening to jazz and playing jazz. So I was never what I call a Nashville musician. This was before moving to Nashville. But um, that's uh, that's a fact that people here probably don't know. So Would does that mean that, that you're like at Bourbon Street all the time or, or no? It, you, it, do you is like that, Bourbon Street? Yeah, I've I've been there. Yeah, yes. But that's the that's the music that that uh, that. That jazz is, um, you know, the the band that we had that played um, uh, last Thursday at the Wild Horse was uh, th th that was my life was playing that kind of music. It was uh, that was that was a lot of fun. Would you say that was the best generation, the Roaring Twenties? My sisters would argue that that's their favorite for sure. Well, I you know I I really enjoy and and to be a little more specific, the swing that came out of, uh, that came out of that generation. I, I love that. I just, uh, I think that's a lot of fun. Hey, we're going to get to movies in a second and swing <laughs> Kids is a, is a great movie in just a second. All right. So now travel in many ways has like really halted. It's mostly getting started back up with COVID. So where's the one destination you are like really excited to to go now that it's pretty easy to move all around the world or easier to move all around the world so we are planning a family trip for this christmas to costa rica um and what's fun i've been down there but i've been down there on business i haven't been down there on pleasure and so we're we're going to be able to take in you know the coast and the mountains and the rainforest and all the different things that costa rica costa rica has to offer but What'll make it even more special is the whole family is going and we're just going to celebrate Christmas while we're there. So that's awesome. Actually, one of the uh, Chloe who works here just got back two days ago from Costa Rica, said it was incredible. I went there on my honeymoon 16 years ago. It is awesome. And I think from a international perspective, maybe the coolest people I've ever met. They were just so warm and welcoming. It was awesome. So you will have a blast. All right. And favorites. Oh, and she came back three to, three shades darker, so you get some sunshine. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> Cold, right? Definitely get some sunshine. All right, what's your favorite sports team? Titans. All right, there you go. I was I was wondering, are you going to go local here? So Tennessee Titans, a little bit of a disappointing year. I think everyone. Man, was I hoping they got to the Super Bowl? That would have been awesome. Yeah that that was a that was a letdown. Um, it 
it still hurts. And, you know, not wanting to point any fingers, just hoping that we can keep the momentum going and, and make this happen next year. So question, now you're obviously very focused on the technology that's moving here and all the stuff that's, you know, the tech parks that are coming in and everything. Have you followed anything on the stadium and the developments on, are they going to renovate? Are they going to build new? Are they going to make a dome, et cetera? Just uh, watching the headlines. Um, you know, it started with, they're, they're going to they're gonna renovate and there was like a $600 million price tag. And that didn't include a, a, um, a roof. Uh, because that was going to be another four hundred million dollars, and now, from what I read, um, you know they've uncovered some other stuff that they're going to have to repair to get up to code. Uh, I think most mainly NFL code as opposed to city code, but that's uh, ballooning the price to a billion plus dollars. And so, why not build a new one, which I think would be awesome. After seeing um, LA's new stadium, uh, it's like wow this is nice mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> this is what this is what you can do these days yeah could you imagine nashville hosting a super bowl what that would look like Whoa. i think that would be incredible don't you i mean we, oh, we did yeah. the draft this next step if we did the draft well, ready. We did, and we did what a grand prix or whatever and if we hosted yep. a super bowl in nashville with the dome stadium i think that would be oh my gosh the fireworks would be awesome so, well, fun fact, the first time I was ever in Nashville, my very first visit was the weekend of the draft. That was the first time I had ever been here. <laughs> well, yeah, so time. what kind of an impression did that leave you? Did it scare you to death or do you think it's cool? Uh, I'm here, aren't I? <laughs> like, I'm, I'm here. That's the easiest way for me to say it. Like, I decided to move here. It was incredible. It was like a time of a life. I actually didn't even know that the draft was happening uh, in Nashville. I just happened to show up because my better half's birthday was that week. Uh, it was for her, her birthday. It was the first reason I came out here. And it honestly was one of the reasons that inspired me to come here. Yeah. So as a local, uh, we left town that weekend. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> it was, I mean, it was, from what I've heard, it was crazy. Just madness. Oh, okay. So I could only imagine what a Super Bowl would bring. All right. So I'm going to go to a, a little bit new question for you specifically that I thought would be a fun one. What is your favorite tech product that you use? You know, this, this seems uh, obvious and kind of bland, but, you know, my iPhone. So I'm a Microsoft guy. And when, when smartphones started coming out, I bought the Microsoft product. And I stuck with that product until you couldn't buy them any longer. And I remember saying, as my friends and family were buying iPhones, you know, when hell freezes over, well, mm -hmm. obviously hell froze over <laughs> because, yeah. Um, and I have to say, I've, I've become a fan. I'm, I'm an Apple fanboy now. It's the product is just so well, uh, so well designed, but, um, you can't live without your phone these days. I mean, I, so no, it's, there's, it's there's so many different things that you could say. I, I like Alexa. Uh. Oh yeah. Yeah. Don't say it too loud or she'll get involved in the interview. That's, that's yeah, right. right. But I, I think that's incredible tech. And you know, I, I, uh, I use that all the time as well. So it's just a fun time. There's, there's, there's so many, uh, so many new innovations that are taking place. Yeah, no, I, I agree from a software space. I picture some of the stuff, my, one of my favorite, like small software products that we use a million times a day here is Calendly. Just in, and I know, I believe you do too. And I remember yes. when we first met, I just went, found your calendar, picked the time and even said where to meet you. We got to choose one of the three locations. I mean, it was, it's like so easy now to schedule a meeting and it saves about a million emails back and forth. Like it, just such a cool tech product. And that is the space where and everything from answering phone, you know, talking to people to surfing the web, to connecting with people on LinkedIn, to, you know, setting up, uh, uh, setting up, you know, forecasts for your business, you know, projects and stuff like that. So. Yeah. I, I went the hardware routes where my mind went, but from a software perspective, I'd have to agree. I mean, that's just, um, that's just changed my life because, you know, people are reaching out all the time wanting to sit down and visit. And it was such a hassle. I don't have an assistant. I never have. I just, you know, I've always 
I've, I've always done that myself and Calendly just changed my life as far as being able to help manage all that. Yeah. All right. So now here's the hardest hitting question where you will be judged heavily. What is your favorite movie? You know, I watched a few of your past interviews and I should have come prepared, <laughs> but I didn't. <laughs> All right. You did your research and you still didn't come prepared. You know, if I was, uh, I, my, uh, my grandkids ask me this question all the time. And the answer that I have to, that I have to give if they're going to accept it is the original Iron Man. Uh, okay. You know, that's the only, that's the only acceptable answer in their mind. So I'll go with that. It was a good move. That is a really good, good superhero yeah. movie. Really good superhero movie. All right. Yeah. All right. So let's kind of get a little bit professional. Tell us a little bit about, you know, professional, Brian, the, the Greater Nashville Tech Council, how you got there, et cetera. Tell us a little of your story. So to, I've lived a long time, so let's abbreviate this. Um, I moved to, I moved to Nashville in 99 and I came here because I, I came here from the St. Louis area and I had created my first tech startup. Um, I won't go into all the details of, of how that happened, but uh, it was focused on healthcare. And through a variety of connections, I met some people in Nashville and discovered what healthcare meant to Nashville or what Nashville meant to healthcare, however you want to, however you want to, uh, to say that, but it's like, wow, if, if I'm trying to sell into hospitals, Nashville is where I need to be. And so that's what brought me here in 99, like so many, many, many other people, healthcare brought us here. Um, I, I, I grew that company. We did business with all of the big, uh, for-profit hospital systems that are headquartered here. Plus there's a, there's a handful of, of for-profit systems that are elsewhere in the country, Tenet, UHS, and a few others. We, we got into uh, department of defense and started selling products to army and air force hospitals, which was, which was pretty fun. Uh, I eventually, um, I took on a partner when I came here, I sold out to my partner, uh, and launched another company in 2010 and, um, tough time from an economic perspective. And there were some things going on with healthcare during that time that people listening that understand the healthcare and where meaningful use was during that time. Um, the solution that I was, um, that I was working on that I had created wasn't directly tied to meaningful use. And there was no way that it was going to succeed at that particular point in time because of the, the politics and funding around meaningful use. And so I, I did a few other things, got involved with some other projects, ended up going to work for a friend of mine as their chief information officer. Um, and it was a company headquartered here my team was all in Dallas. We bought another software company in California. And so I was doing the every week I was on an airplane kind of routine and did that for three years and finally just said, I've, I can't do this anymore. You know, I've got to get some stability back into my life and um, set down true story, sit down with a friend of mine who is a career coach and said, I need some help. I've never looked for a job. <laughs> I don't know what this looks like, man. You, you got to help me out. My resume is like 25 years old or 30 years old. And so he, he had this process where, you know, he steps you through a hundred things that are important and then take 10 away and take 10 away and take 10 away. And you end up with the three most important things. You guys probably help people go through this thing too. But um, so we, <laughs> we ended up with um, needs to be Nashville, needs to be tech. And I'd had some experience with a nonprofit. I was president of Tennessee Hymns, the health information management, the, the, the IT part of health, healthcare, and had a lot of, um, but I, I enjoyed that a lot. Uh, and so I said, okay, nonprofit would be kind of an interesting thing to get involved with. I'm sitting in his office and he gets a phone call from the chairman of the board of the technology council saying, we are opening a search today looking for the next CEO. <laughs> and here I am. <laughs> there we go. Not, 
So, so question about that, right? So like you've spent almost six years at this point as CEO over at Nashville Technology Council, right? And I, I'd be curious to hear like what you feel like have been some of the biggest changes, right? Like what are some of the biggest changes? And I guess what are a few of your like biggest highlight moments, if you will? So th there's a few. Um, a lot. Uh, there's and, a lot, and, I would assume. And I'm. I, I, let me preference this by saying, one, it's something like this is a team sport and, and, and I've got a great team and, and that team is the staff and the team is also the board, you know, so it's, so it's a team effort. I also will preface it by saying I've, I've been going, I've, I've been in a right place, right time. It's been a very fortuitous setting for me because Nashville is just on fire. And so I always have this rhetorical uh, argument. Okay. Is it, is Nashville's economy on fire because of the tech sector's growth or is the tech sector growth because of Nashville's economy that's that's so strong? And I think the two are almost, you, you, you can't decouple them. I think they're, they're very closely tied. So first thing to answer your question, Shane, <clears throat> um, we opened Tech Hill Commons. So our space didn't exist until, um, until 2016. So I was hired and I was handed a signed lease and 9,500 square feet of concrete. And uh, our lease payments started two months uh, two, two months away from my, my starting. And it's like, holy crap, we got to get this place <laughs> open and we got to prove that we can make something and, and that, we can, um, that, that we can host events here and, and at least break even on that. So that was the first thing, you know, that, that was a literal sprint. You talk about sprints in software development world. That was my first sprint to get Tech Hill Commons open. And I've got to say, in, in my opinion, in the 22 years that uh, the Tech Council's been around, I think opening Tech Hill Commons is probably the most impactful thing that we've done because finally, the community could point to a space and say, that's where tech lives. You know, we can go there and we can have our meetings and we can have our meetups and, you know, we can, we can uh, attend events there and we can find people there that can help us out. So I would say that was, um, that was the first thing. Um, early on when I had my first meeting with uh, the board, I had, at least two things that I wanted to walk away with. You know, it was a kind of get to know you meeting, but I wanted to define what technology meant because I think in the eyes of a lot of people in the community, they thought that the tech council defined technology as back office IT infrastructure, period. And I said, I want to take a much broader view, you know, it's, it's software development and it's graphic art design and it's, you know, it's even hardware uh, for, for whatever little bit of that takes place uh, in, in our space. Um, so I want to take a very, it, it's, it's manufacturing in, in some cases, you know, the, the advanced, fact, advanced manufacturing that's going on here, look at, look at what's happened with, you know, that, migrating over to electric vehicles now and it's so technology driven so i want to take a very broad view of, of uh, and, and we agreed the board agreed with that and the second thing that i wanted to walk away with was what's one metric that we can all agree on that we can use to measure our success so we're starting a new a, a, a new partnership together here what can we agree on and there'll be lots of metrics that we use but what's the one that we can agree on and what we agreed on was the size of the tech workforce. Yep. Head because count. Just head count in Nashville. That's right. Head count in if, Brentwood, yeah. if we're executing on everything else that we're doing, we should see the results of that in a growing tech workforce. And so from day one, that was the metric we established. And then two years after that, we doubled down in a really big way when our board established the BHAG, the big, hairy, audacious goal, to double the size of our tech workforce by 2025. And, you know, that was, we, we did that, Amazon had, we came up with that metric and like a week later, Amazon announced that they were coming to town. Um, Amazon, <laughs> Oracle, <laughs> Facebook, 
I mean, we've got we've got a pretty big gaming studio that just is investing. That's right, you know, Iron a, Galaxy. A lot of money. Iron Galaxy is coming yep. out here, and that's a pretty big deal because there's uh, there's other gaming studios that happen to exist out here, but their hardest part is like they need a couple of big players out here to help attract talent, and like that's getting ready to happen. Music and everything, and it's 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 absolutely incredible, like how that's going to change, you know. The, the, the breadth of talent here. I think that um, in a lot of ways, and, and you've been involved in it, there's been a pretty big like .NET, .Core, .NET Core kind of framework everywhere. Like there's a lot of legacy systems out here. And I'm, I'm pretty jazzed up about a lot of the new companies that are going to come out here and start breaking some of that up and helping people kind of modernize local talent. Yeah, I am too. And I hadn't thought, I should have, um, but knowing how much you all work in the gaming space. This is a big announcement for you to have, you know, this massive, th this, this big company that's, that's going to be right here. So that's extremely exciting to me uh, to, to see that happening because it really is at the intersection of the tech and the creative communities, you know, which are, you know, two of the hottest things going right now. Yeah. So I guess that to, 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 to kind of finish my thought and 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 put a, an exclamation on it, there's a report that came out very uh, towards the end of last year from CBRE, the big realty company, um, that showed that Nashville has the fastest growing tech workforce in the country over the past five years. So this is our metric. We want to double the size of the workforce. It's grown. You know, we 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 we've got the fastest growing workforce now. So. For a lot of reasons too, right? And I, and I think like, you know, I think for the last couple of seconds, we've been talking about the fact that Facebook, Oracle, Amazon, Iron Galaxy, like these are people that are coming here, but like, you know, the Nashville Technology Council is doing more than just trying to get people here, right? They're also helping with the youth. They're also helping with students and and, and children that are getting exposed to STEM for the first time. And I, I know that you guys just did a, an event recently um, that I was I was reading about that was pretty awesome. And I'd love to hear a little bit about some of that stuff too. Yeah, when we established that BHAG, we knew, one, we couldn't do that all on our own. And so we immediately started recruiting a coalition of partners that was the area chambers of commerce, the area educational uh, uh, institutions, um, people that we would need to pull together to accomplish this goal of, of doubling the size of the tech workforce. And we also knew that it would take a multifaceted approach. So traditional education, uh, non-traditional education, and then recruiting. And so we've been involved with all three of those efforts. So you mentioned, um, I think you're referring to our traveling tech days that. Yeah. 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 So, so that was, um, I, I, I'm jazzed about man. Like I, I genuinely wish like Lewiston, Idaho, where I grew up had that, or even, even federal way in Washington around the greater Seattle area. Like I, I never had the opportunity to even hear about those things, which is pretty incredible. Yeah. So <clears throat> the, the, uh, the, the, the focus of that particular, um, program is to shuttle students. And we had about 120 students that we shuttled uh, all over town. So we had some that went, and you'll find you'll find these locations really interesting. So we had some that went to Mars Pet Care that, that here in Williamson County. They're a tech company. Every company is a tech company. And so- Every company they, is a tech company. They, they took them through a design thinking exercise. You know, people don't, that you, you People think you just sit down, you have a product and you just start coding. Well, not if you do it right. If, if you're going to do it right, you design the product first and you go through this whole process. And once you've got it designed, then you start the coding. And so they took them through this design, uh, this product design process. But um, they didn't talk about this, but some technology they're doing that I think is super cool because my, my little buddy is sitting at my feet here. Th they can identify a dog by scanning his nose. So just like a, like a, fingerprint, like a fingerprint, that's right. It's a nose print and they can identify yeah. dogs that way. So huh. I, right here in Nashville, that's, uh, that's, that's been developed. So there were some students there. There were some students that went to the state of Tennessee. You might think, oh my gosh, what, what would that look like? Man, they had, uh, they had a sign out in the front yard 
you know, welcome Nashville Technology Council and Traveling Tech Days. And they took them in and they had all this programming uh, ready and designed for them, uh, talking about the different kinds of jobs that you could have working for the state that's in technology. And they, they let them take some computers apart and they took them to uh, kind of the hard drive graveyard that they maintain where hard drives get, uh, get crunched up uh, so that uh, none, of the, uh, none of the information can be read. Anyway, I, they, they did a wonderful job. Um, we took some out to um, Darvis, which is a relatively new company that just yeah. relocated here from San Francisco. And they're doing some super cool stuff with, um, well, I've got several things going on, but one of them is, you know, utilizing cameras uh, in hospitals or elsewhere. They're, they've got a project going with the, with the post office. Um, so they, they train these cameras to uh, recognize uh, different equipment or whether a shelf is empty in a post office. Um, and so they can, you know, a, a bed could roll by in a hospital, one of these cameras, and not it could identify that bed and know exactly what model it is, know whether there was a patient in the bed or not, know whether the bed was made up or not. And so just all those things that would help a hospital kind of manage those assets. Anyway, they, they, they went out there. Um, so. We actually just, I just signed us up. Um, <clears throat> we'll talk a little bit about the Nashville Tech Council and how people can get involved. We're involved. We're a member. We just signed up um, to do one of it for the 11th and 12th graders at Sumner County to be able to come uh, to next level here. Because my thought is, you know, in a lot of cases, people see technology strictly from, like you said, coding only, IT only. There are like an octopus, you know, millions of arms really of technology. We are not actually a software company, but we support software companies, gaming studios, companies that do computer vision like Dar like you're talking about with Darvis and everything else. And so I thought, well, hey, maybe expose these students to what does it look like to look at, a, you know, tons of different profiles of engineers, AI programmers, product people, designers, et cetera. And and see what it's like to be communicating with them and, and how we go through the recruiting for and bringing talent to Nashville or San Francisco, Silicon Valley, et cetera. So yeah. we signed up for one of those because I love the idea that you're recognizing if we can train some of these homegrown talents who go to whether it's Beach High School or it's Brentwood High School or it's, or it's wherever, that that's as important as bringing the tech talent here too. It, it absolutely is. It's, it's this whole, like I said, multifaceted. So there's a piece of it that's, that's growing our own tech talent pipeline. And I think we've made a lot of great progress there. So that's K through 12 and our universities. So from the university perspective, making sure that the skills that their students graduate with match the skills that our member companies are looking for to hire. And so it, you, you, you need to make sure that you're plugged in and having that two-way communication. Um, the non-traditional way, the non-traditional uh, path is boot camps and internships and apprenticeship programs. Um, another way that you guys could really get plugged in, um, our team uh, last year created this program called Tech Coach. So whether you're coming right out of high school, whether you're coming out of High, uh, college, whether you're coming out of a boot camp, whether you're transitioning out of the military, whether you're um, a stay-at-home parent that that made that choice to be with your family and now you're wanting to move back into the workforce, regardless of where you're coming from, if you're wanting to move to a new tech career, that's what this program is designed to help you with. So it's resume review and it's mock interviews and it's um, you know, webinars on different topics like how to build out your LinkedIn profile, what not to do on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> what not yep. to do on Facebook is a big one. <laughs> not to do on Facebook is a big one. Yeah, I know we. Um, I, I know we're talking to MTSU and we're talking to a couple of universities. And I know me and Taylor are going to be volunteering. Um, 
you know, at least probably eight to 10 days this year going to universities to speak to people that are like, it could be sales, it could be marketing, but we're going to do a lot of engineering, which is like, how do you get in front of somebody for the first time, right? Because there's a, there, there's a big bottleneck where a lot of people don't know what, uh, you know, the companies like Facebook or Climate or Zillow, because I've worked at a lot of those places in the past, they don't know what their resume needs to look like. They don't know how to position themselves to go, how do I even get an interview? Is there non-traditional ways to get into contact with somebody? Is there non-traditional ways to meet with somebody at an organization to figure out, is this the right culture for me? Is, is do, do they have the right training programs for me? And I know um, we're trying to get more involved um, specifically with some of the local universities so we could start teaching and coaching and mentoring people where they're not going to be, you know, it, to, to your point, you know, they're not going to be of any use to us at the beginning, but like, we know that we want to build a community here and we're looking at it. Like, how can we create impact five years from now, 10 years from now? That's why we even do Founders Live. Founders Live, at the end of the day, most of those people aren't going to be customers of ours. You know, not today, maybe five to 10 years down the road, but it's still building that community here and getting people involved and like, and, and trying to figure out how do you create those like, sparks like how do you capture the lightning in a bottle to get somebody excited about the idea of getting involved in stem that that's and i think we share a lot of the same passion in that no and i love that i mean you guys came here and you just jumped in with both feet i i remember who in the heck is these guys you know what <laughs> but <laughs> We're two, uh, we were two months in. Yeah, we we're two months in and we're like, <laughs> I feel like we started meeting everyone. And I'll, I'll be honest, I think we ruffled a couple of feathers on accident, not on purpose. It's just, he's from Chicago. I'm from Seattle. That's just what we do. <laughs> like, just, like. No, I think it's awesome. I, I, I think it's awesome. And I, and I love, and I appreciate how you've, how you've come in and in a short while, just really gotten involved at a very, uh, big level with with what's going on here, trying to make a difference. Yeah, well, we because tried you to understand. Embrace, I'm sorry, we've tried to embrace the same thing, like like what you've done, because we feel the same way—a passion around being a part of Nashville's growth. Because it enticed us to come here, but with separately too. It wasn't like Shane and I did it on separately. Got really enticed to come here from. And we'll talk about in a second all the cool stuff that you've kind of showcased about Nashville. And we want to be a part of other people seeing that, hearing that, being a part of that, because it's been the coolest 18, 16 months of my life so far. So honestly, yeah. it was the best decision I ever made for my business. Hands ha hands down coming to Nashville. I mean, we've gone from zero, like we've gone from when you talked to me and Taylor, where we, I think we had two people working in my basement at the time. We didn't have an office yet because we were trying to figure that out because of COVID. Um, but we've gone from zero to 18. And by the end of this year, we'll likely be at 35 to 40 full-time employees at next level. And I, I'm just stoked to see what kind of impact those people make, whether that's in Nashville or nationally, because most of our customers aren't in Nashville yet. Yeah. Well, you get what we have to coach some of our young new member companies, especially if they're sales focused companies in the way you leverage an organization like ours and the way you the way you the way you grow your business isn't by going out and sell 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 it's going out and giving and if you're and if you're giving if you're trying to make a difference people will notice that and they will come to you you don't have to go to them they will come to you yep that's what and then we just we had a meeting with MTSU and that was the We've learned that ourselves of like, yeah, we could sit down and go, hey, here's how we want to be a part. How much can we pay? What do we got to do? Sell, sell. Instead, we said, look, use us. This is my experience. This is Shane's. This is where our expertise, if you will, is use us. Steal our time. We're open to giving it. The beautiful thing is we have the ability to, because of our team, is able to pick up an, enough of our Slack that we can go give a day to MTSU and just do resume workshops. And none of those people are going to be candidates or clients for us. They're too young. You know, they're not senior level or whatever, but just we're here to help because you're right. It does. It comes back tenfold and all of a sudden companies come to us and go, Hey, you know, you guys are really helping out. I want to be a part of what you guys are doing, whether it's founders live or meeting people through the Nashville tech council at different events and stuff like that. So we agree wholeheartedly. Yeah. Good job. <clears throat> so, so tell us how can people, if we can, kind of uh, advertise the greater Nashville Tech Council? Like, 
why join and how do they join? What kind of company should be a part of it? And then once they do join for maybe the people who might listen into this and go, Hey, we're members, but we, we really haven't gotten terribly involved. What are some of the best ways they can get involved and give back and help outside of just maybe those, you know, come to your office for a day meetings? Yeah. So thanks for asking the question, uh, getting involved technologycouncil.com. I don't know how we ever landed that URL, but that's beautiful. <laughs> 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 yep. Technologycouncil.com. And there's a, you know, there's, there's a place there for, for membership. You can actually sign up to become a member right there online. Um, membership is company based. We don't really have um, an individual membership. There are some um, exceptions to that. One exception to that is if you're in transition. And so, Obviously, you're going to meet people that are in transition with what you do. But if you're in transition, we have a community member that we've created and we will uh, we will allow you to uh, associate your profile with that community member so that you can get while you're in transition. I mean, getting access to our programming is more important while you're in transition than probably after you after you get uh, uh, your job. So. We want to make sure that we don't cut people off inadvertently from that. And so there is a way if you're in transition or if you just graduated, it, that's a different kind of transition, just graduated. Um, but you can get plugged in that way. Um, there's a bunch of other, if you, um, if you just kind of examine the website, this tech coach program I was telling you about is described there. Something that we that we really uh, focus on is for new members that have just joined. And I'm sure that um, Danielle has reached out to you guys to do this, but for new members, we like to do what we call an NTC 101. So this is bringing your entire team together to basically go through all the different things that we're involved with. And the goal is to find something that you say, wow, I would love to get plugged into that. So whether that's going to a college and talking to them or you know, doing resume reviews or being a mentor or, you know, we host um, tech camps during the summer. Um, so these are all the way down into, you know, middle school age kids. They're um, learning to code or they're learning robotics or they're learning um uh, the, the basics of networking. There's a variety of different content that we do, but the goal is to introduce students at as young an age as we can to what a career in technology might look like. I think there was a point in time, and you guys may, may be able to relate to this, but I think there was a point in time many years ago where a lot of parents were hearing about all the tech jobs being outsourced overseas. And I think they just got the impression that there wasn't a future for their children in technology because all those jobs were being outsourced overseas. And so part of this is trying to educate the parents too, to the fact that, man, these are, uh, th these are good paying jobs. One of the things that the state did uh, during traveling tech days is they, put a, a slide up on the screen that showed the different uh, the, the different job titles and the salaries. And the kids were pulling their phone out and taking pictures of this thing. It's like, holy cow, you can make a lot of money in technology. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's really just trying to get that word out that, yeah, you can make money, but you can also have fun and, and it doesn't all have to be coding. It can be, it could be marketing. It could be, you know, design. It could, you could be designing it uh, games instead of, you know, accounting packages. You could be a, you could be a recruiter guys. You could be, like, a, recruiter. You could be a recruiter. Hey, <laughs> you could be a recruiter. hey next level. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're right. You're right. There's so many different facets of technology. You can be in product. You can be a product manager, which I think is one of the coolest roles in technology because yeah, some people might go, Hey, look, I don't know that I'm, I'm made for coding. It's okay. You can still be really heavily involved if you have that creative brain in the design side, or if you really love working with customers. I mean, we work on the product side with a lot of different companies, product managers, product marketing managers, et cetera. 
So totally get it. I think that's awesome. So again, I think it's important. I will give a quick shout out. Danielle over at the tech council made it really easy to get all like, so when you said you can just go on there and like get all set up in there, you're not lying. It was like very, very easy to get in, get your membership, pay, do all of it in a matter of like three minutes. And then I actually screwed it up and Danielle got me all fixed up in a matter of three more minutes. So it was really easy. Danielle was, I remember was seeing those emails. Yeah. <laughs> And so I know, I know I was, you're like, come on, man, aren't you in tech? You screwed this up. How'd you pull this up? Well, I did, but, but Danielle was a big help in, in getting it done. And I suggest I'm, I'm pretty excited about being involved and I'm really excited about the technology, the traveling tech where they, the students come here, as you know, Shane and I's background is working with college students, but just, you know, young adults. And so to be able to have, like, I'm just like really excited to have 10, 22, whatever it is, high school students come over here and see technology happening, even though we're not coding and seeing all the different profiles. And we're talking to people from Facebook or from Gearbox or wh whatever company it is out there, some big name companies or some of these small tech startups. All right. So I want to finish off with a couple of hard hitting quick questions for you that you're really not going to want to answer because I'm going to put you on the spot. All right. <laughs> because you have to answer and, and, and you can't have a super long explanation. Favorite tech startup in Nashville. You're like, Oh, come on, man. That <laughs> is a no win up? question, man. <laughs> <laughs> I know you can name a couple, some cool new tech startups in Nashville. I know you're like, this is like giving an, you know, a thank you speech and I'm going to forget someone. I, I, I am. I mean that man, I'm going to, so, you know, you have to you have to mention built technology because they just hit unicorn yeah. status, um, you know, Silicon Ranch, which maybe that's a stretch to say that that's in the same, you know, technology field. But still solar, that's technology in my mind. And you yeah. Know, oh, yeah. They, they actually hit they, they actually hit the, the unicorn status just a few months before built technologies did. So two new unicorns that we've had here in the past uh in the past 12 months, which is, which is pretty exciting. Yeah. Built's um, my favorite. I, I'm, I'm, I think construction, which I, I'm a little bit passionate about. It's unicorn tech homegrown here in Nashville. So anyone who's not familiar, they will be very soon. Built technologies is awesome. Yeah. You know, I mentioned Darvis. I think, I think they're doing some really cool stuff. There's a, there's a company that just came here from, uh, from Boston called Tiki. That's, that's doing some pretty cool stuff too. Um, I think we're meeting with a bunch of the Tiki folks here next week. So. Yeah, there's um, there's a company that just relocated here from uh, Chicago called Zerve that's in the IoT space. Energy Box is, has just come here from New Jersey. They're also in the IoT space. Um, I've so the the reason all those are coming to mind is because I've been working with them as as they relocate here and and trying to get them trying to get them settled and connected, but. Uh, there's also a lot of really cool homegrown companies that uh, that are here too, and I've already dug myself in a hole. So they're all great. <laughs> they are. They are. I just I wanted to be able to highlight some of these companies because again, it is cool. So I'm going to flip it. Those were startups. Those are the new stuff. What was your favorite announcement of a company that was moving here? Because you're obviously you're very well connected. You put out a lot of these announcements on LinkedIn or whatever or at least repost some of them. What was the most exciting one for you to say, hey, this is, I, I feel like I, Nashville's here. Maybe you were a part of it, maybe not. Just, I don't know, is it Amazon or Facebook or whoever? So, um, I think the most significant one, and not just because of the sheer volume of the investment and the number of potential hires is Oracle. And I say that because, well, Oracle has a lot of different products that they that they create, but essentially, in the end, they create the products that other companies use to build products. They are at a different the the types of talent, the types of people that they're going to attract here because of what they do is just going to be different than what the companies that we've had 
what we're, we're, we're doing. There's a little bit of that, that, that goes on. AWS is, is you could say a similar thing about, um, but for, for that reason, and for just a true tech company is what I look at Oracle as being. And again, not to offend anybody else in town, yeah. but <laughs> I, I think that's significant. Um, and I, and I, I just think it puts Nashville in a different place because they're here and they're going to call this home. And um, Steve Miranda was, I, I had a chance to interview him on stage at our uh, annual meeting uh, in, last summer. And, you know, he made the point because the question came from the audience. There's a lot of Nashville companies that are really concerned about you coming in and hiring all their people. And I thought he answered that question really well. I said, listen, we're having to fight too, because here we are, this great big multi-billion dollar company. And I am every day talking to people saying, I don't know if I want to come to work for you because I think I want to go to work for a startup. And he's, and he said, I'm having to tell, hey, we're a fun company to work for too. He said, <laughs> you know, we don't, we, we don't get all the wins. We have, we're having to compete too. And also they are so big that <clears throat> they're not going to try and build everything. They're looking to partner with people that are already here. He said, so instead of looking at this as competition or as a threat, I would encourage you to look at this as an opportunity, as a partnership. And how can, yeah. how can we work with you to accomplish both of our goals? I thought that was a beautiful way to answer that question. I, I agree. And, I, and I, that's a big one in Seattle. Like if you think about even Amazon, Amazon has its, you know, big headquarters out there. If you look at the amount of the sheer volume of partnership companies out there where their business exists because of them doing business with Amazon, it's incredible. So, you know, let's say Oracle brings in 5,000 jobs. That's only in-house. Think about all, like all the other infrastructure stuff that that's going to have to help support. And I think that's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I think you're going to see the same thing in the EV space with General Motors being so powerful here. Sure enough, Trillium, I think is how you say it, is launching here or moving here. And you're going to start to see a lot of pop up, and then you're going to also see, and maybe General Motors doesn't want to hear this, some of their talent will leave and start up companies that will eventually yes. sell back yeah. into General Motors or be part of the EV ecosystem. I really think Nashville will potentially. You talk ten years from now. It will be considered a hub, if not the hub for, but probably not the hub, but a hub for EVs. You know, Austin, I agree. I, I agree. And and kudos to the state for really working hard to make that happen. It, it's yeah. it's very exciting. And again, I take credit for that too. I mean, that's tech. <laughs> yes. uh, you know, that's that's part of this larger tech ecosystem that's that that's uh, coming to play here. So, so let's do a little bit of product placement here. We'll do a little product placement. We'll, we'll make sure that, you know, we don't have a, a Coke, uh, Coca-Cola or something. All right. Sell me on why Nashville. What are some cool reasons why a company should move to Nashville? For those, you know, the, the millions of people watching this who are thinking about moving to Nashville, why Nashville? So the things that um, six years ago, right after I was named CEO of the Tech Council, I attended the... Uh, Nashville Analytics Summit. Uh, it was at the Omni, and I'm walking down the hall, and Clark Buckner with Relationary Marketing. I'm not sure that Relationary existed back then, but he still ran a podcast. He grabbed me and stuck a microphone in my face and said, uh, Brian, what's the secret sauce? What makes Nashville special? And, you know, I know I had this deer in the headlights look, and he was. <laughs> He was kind enough to say, okay, take a breath and think about that for a minute and let's talk in 10 minutes after you've had a chance to think about how you want to answer that. But the, the, the answer that I came up with, I really haven't varied from. And that was, I think a part of the secret sauce is just this community that exists here that I attributed at the time to Southern values. Um, Nashville doesn't have a, a corner on the market for Southern values or for friendly people 
although we have been voted the friendliest town uh, in, in the, in the nation, a couple of different times, but some other Southern cities have too. You don't see New York getting voted the friendliest city in the United nope. States. <laughs> nope. <laughs> the Chicago's not. So, so there is, there is something to this. Um, and so, so fast forward, you know, five years and kind of living this and talking to companies that are coming in and having their first experience, you all had your first experience. It was the draft when, uh, when, when yeah. you came down here, Shane, but what what we hear over and over again is holy crap i just can't believe how easy it is to get appointments and how friendly everybody is and how collaborative everybody is because if you're coming from one of the coasts you're just not accustomed to that there's advantages to you know to to, to being on the coast water being one of them but um the from a business perspective this collaborative inclusive community that is Nashville, I think is, is number one. So, so that's number one, the obvious answers that are, you know, almost too easy are, uh, the, the tax base here, both of you came from high tax, uh, uh, states yep. and, you know, we were talking before we went on camera, you, you can, even though the prices of real estate have gone up, by the time you factor in your entire monthly outgo and and the, the difference in property tax in Nashville versus Chicago, you're saving money all over the place. It is one quarter of what we paid in Chicago per, as a percentage of value of home. A quarter. So it's four times less. It's yeah. outrageous. But you guys know, you know, in, in sales, if all you're selling is price, you're going to lose eventually. And so I don't yeah. want to just sell price. Uh, and and that, I, will, I will say, let me add to your first point, which is how easy it is to meet with people. And this is a testament to you, Brian. We were about two months in and it was Shane and I in a basement. And <laughs> I reached out to you on LinkedIn and said, hey, would you, and you sent me your calendar and said, let's meet. And it wasn't like, a, hey, I'll give you three minutes while I'm walking down Wall Street to talk to me. It was, here are the three restaurants. Where do you want to grab lunch or coffee? I was blown away. I remember telling Shane, like, holy cow, Shane, Brian's like at the center of technology and he wants to have a lunch with us. Like, I was blown away. Again, we were maybe two months in and we were operating out of his basement and you didn't worry about that. You didn't ask what our headcount was. What's our revenue? Are we big enough fish to worry about spending an hour with? You just said, sure, let's meet. And I've had that experience multiple times. Yep. But again, being at the epicenter of technology here and being willing to meet with us was a testament to Nashville because that's how everyone really is. But, you know, especially with you, it's awesome. It, it is. And we talk about this all the time. You can get a first appointment with anybody. The second appointment you got to earn. <laughs> but I, I really try to live that to the best of my ability. And I encourage other people in the business community here. Let's not lose that. Let's not lose that thing that makes Nashville I, special. I, I, I agree. And what's been awesome, and I've, I've said this a couple of times when people have asked me why I moved to, why I decided to stay in Nashville. So I, I didn't move to Nashville. I had no intent to stay here, right? Like my intent was come here for a bit and go back to Seattle um, once COVID was over and things opened back up. And I fell in love with it because the, the, the people have been incredible. Um, I've also made it very clear that like we are hiring predominantly like sales forward people. So whether you're on the marketing side of our business, it doesn't matter what you're doing. Like at the end of the day, everyone in our company is more or less a sales or marketing type of person. Right. And I would say like Nashville's introverts are like Seattle's extroverts. Uh, and that's been a really unique thing to, to be a part of where it's just like everyone out here is just so social and they're so nice. And anybody that believes they're an introvert, they're Seattle's extroverts. Yeah. Yeah. The, the other point real quick uh, to, to make, especially, well, individual or company, either one, but the, another thing that we hear over and over that kind of was an aha moment for me last year was people look at Nashville and they see this vibrant community, this very friendly, collaborative community, but they also see a city that they can come to and feel they can still make a difference. You're not gonna move to Chicago and think you can make a difference or Seattle or San Francisco or New York. Um, you can, or even Austin these days, I don't think, but they can, they can come to Nashville 
and and see that it is a place that they can they can actually make a difference and that's important to people wh whether you're a company or whether you're an individual to to feel that you can come here and and get involved and 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 become a player and make a difference so you, you know you guys are doing that already yeah no i would agree wholeheartedly all right so what was your, what's your favorite restaurant in town oh man so i'm not <laughs> Nashville's quite the foodie town now. I'm not the foodie. We we hit the you like first watch. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I like first watch. Okay, that's a good one. There you go. All right, first watch. All right, Shane, what's yours? I want to highlight some cool local places. Mine's Mojo's oh. Tacos down in uh, the factory. My favorite is Butcher and Bee. All right, Butcher okay. and Bee. What's your favorite thing to do in town? What uh, attraction, activity, something like that? Um, playing frisbee golf with my kids. Where at? Yeah. Oh, where at? Over at Crockett. Yeah, which is right, right across the street from where I live. So yeah. Okay, Crockett Park in Brentwood. It is awesome. Yeah. My kids play baseball there, football there. There's soccer fields. I when I, when we have friends in town from Chicago, I take them there to show them what a park really looks like. Because in Chicago, where I live. A park is like surrounded by houses all around it. And it's about the size of a typical backyard here. There, it's like, hey, here's your 13 football fields, 19 soccer fields, frisbee golf, and eight baseball fields. All in one with walking trails where you'll probably end up seeing turkey. And it's in the middle of like where everyone lives. It's amazing. All right, Shane, what's yours? Up. Yeah, yeah. I, I, honestly, I, I just like crawling the bar scene. If I have to, if I have to be <laughs> honest, right? Like, I think a lot of there's a lot of like local outside of Broadway music places that do a lot of uh, ride arounds. I freaking love ride arounds. It, it's it's just it's incredible. Favorite one, Live Oak. Uh, Live Oak is the most consistent, but there's 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 ones that I that surprise me a lot that I really like as well. Okay. I love walking the streets of Franklin. Never thought I would. I thought it'd be more like my wife's. I love just with my wife and my kids, just walk up and down the streets of Franklin. Again, I got five kids. So for me, I'm not going to Broadway like Shane That's a is. cheap date. It, it is. <laughs> exactly. It is. All right. Last question. What are you most excited about in 2022, Brian? <clears throat> well, uh, as you, as you may or may not heard, I'm, I, I'm going to be stepping away from uh, the tech council here in a couple of months. Uh, and I'm, I have bittersweet feelings about that. Uh, I love what I do and I love what's going on with the tech scene. And I think, um, I think we're going to, I think we're going to continue to see incredible growth here, but um, generally speaking, what I'm hoping to be able to be more involved with, is not just the economic development side of tech that I've been so focused on and the talent development side of tech, but the innovation economy. So as I think about this and as I talk to people about what's on my mind, it's what can I do and how can I leverage the relationships that I've built to drive the innovation economy here? And of course, in my mind, that's that's tech, but... Um, I, I don't know what that is, but you know, more, more to come. Whatever it is, it's going to be exciting. Yeah, that's awesome. I, and regardless of the rumors, Shane and I had no part of pushing Brian out. That's not true. No, I'm <laughs> kidding. I, it, it's it's awesome. I think amazing. You pulled off what Tom Brady couldn't, which is you're leaving while you're on top. Um, you've done an amazing <laughs> thing with uh, the Greater Greater Nashville Tech Council. It's it's awesome to see. I'm sure there's going to be. A lot of people who look back at your six-year tenure and see the massive growth. And really, you're the second person we've had on, on this who has made a comment about what you did when you came to your organization was you picked one thing to, that you were going to do, one metric, and you were going to be great at it. And really, in so many ways, you've accomplished that. I know it's not 2025, but you have absolutely put uh, you know Nashville on the technology map. And... Everything from Amazon, Facebook, Darvis, you name it, moving here, built, growing here, the schools around here really embracing STEM and STEM education from the high school and elementary school even to the colleges. It's been awesome. And I really, truly mean this when I say I think a reason why Shane and I are here is stuff that you did, whether you knew it or not, whether it was like some flyer 
sticker we received from you in the mail. No, <laughs> but it was the environment that you created here made it ripe for Shane and I to a want to move here. And that some of that's the state, like you said, to just the general economy. And a lot of it was creating an ability to run a tech company here in town was, was fun. It was exciting. It was sexy. It was, it was cool. Like you said, a place you could feel like you made a difference in tech you know, you can't do that in Chicago. You just, it just doesn't happen. And you can't do it in Seattle. And, and so moving here was a big part of that was you. So thank you for that. Yeah. Well, you're very kind. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm glad that you guys are here. You know, it's, it's people like you that are making a difference. That's going to just keep the momentum going. Yeah. Well, we hope so. This has been awesome. Personally, favorite interview we've done because we also know you too. And it was revolved around a lot of stuff that we have a lot of shared passion, interests, and in it with, and uh, Brian has been, and I mean this for anyone in, in the area who's in tech, he, he embodies the warm uh, Southern culture of technology here more than anyone I have seen down here. Just the willingness to meet, point you in whatever direction you need. So how do people get in touch with you? How do they connect with you or the tech council and get involved? What's the easiest way? You mentioned the website, maybe do it again and, and other ways to connect with you. Yeah, the website, technologycouncil.com. Personally, it's it's BD Moyer. So it's LinkedIn slash BD Moyer. That's my Twitter handle. So those are the easiest ways. Uh, BD Moyer at Gmail, BD Moyer at uh Th th those are the easy ways. <laughs> Perfect. So reach out to him. I'm telling you, reach out to him. Thank him for what he's done here in Nashville. Get connected with him, and, you know, and, and he will give you any direction. He's a great guy to know in the area. Pretty much everyone knows you. When I make a connection with someone, it's like, oh, you and so-and-so have Brian Moyer in common. I'm like, yep, of course. Everyone knows Brian. <laughs> so thank you again for coming on here. Really yeah, appreciate it. It's, it's, it's been fun. Thanks for having me. All right. Bye. See you guys. Next day.